Okay, so I'm going to make a GitHub repository. Um, I haven't even connected that to my site here. Um, so this is going to be um, a couple a couple of different phases here to, to get this working on a hosted provider. One is going to be we're going to have connection to GitHub. And then once we have that repo set up, um, just to check it here, we're going to go over to Tina Cloud and we're going to hook that up to Tina Cloud. So Tina Cloud is basically doing the job of this. Um, if you run the server, you run this, that's going to index the files in, in your files you know, folders, and it's going to serve them as GraphQL. That all works seamlessly locally, but obviously there's no file system on a lot of these hosted platforms. You can't just, you know, tap into the file system there. And even if you could, if you made changes to it, where does it go? It never makes its way back over to GitHub. So the role of Tina Cloud is to make sure make that stuff a lot easier. Um, so we've got our, our site here, um, and we're going to deploy this to Vercel. But before we do that, um, we're going to create a project. So I've got a, I'm logged into Tina. Um, and with that, I'll just connect to GitHub. Okay, so Llama Link, that's the repo I just made. And we're going to do a couple things. We're going to do a local host first, and then we'll talk about um, doing it for real in, in a second. Uh, we get this client ID, and there's a couple of things we'll do here. Um, in the earlier video, we talked a little bit about this configuration. And up here, we we just gave these empty strings because we don't need them for local development. Um, but now we do. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to just test that things actually work. And so we're going to do main because that's the branch that I just deployed. Client ID provided here. Uh, and then we also have a token. This token is going to be a read-only token. Um, and that token is just going to be for um, you know serving your site. This is... Uh, somewhat private token, um, but it's read only. So you can't even make mutations with it. If somebody were to get this token, they can just read your content, which you may not want. Um, it may be a private, you know, piece of content that you haven't published yet. So it is something that needs to be kept a secret. Client ID, really not a secret at all. Um, but for now, I'm going to hard code this. So this content has been uh, connected to, to Tina. And what Tina does when it when it gets that is it's going to start to um, index things. So uh, it's working right now to branch uh, to index. Um, and we'll we'll make sure that our, our branch is sort of, you know, ready there. Just hit refresh and, and it was ready. Works pretty quickly. Um, we can see we have the main branch indexed here. So we should actually be good to go. And what we're going to do here is we're going to actually build our site we're going to run our dev site um, with Tina Cloud as a source of truth. So typically we have this this um, npm command here, dev, and that's going to run Tina CMS dev dash c slash next dev, um, and that's going to run that that local server. But basically we're saying we don't need that local server. We've we've got our content over in, in Tina uh, Tina Cloud. This is something that you should probably do just to make sure that you've got things configured properly before you try to get it, you know, deployed. So um, instead of Tina CMS Dev, we can actually run um, we can run Tina CMS Build, and that's going to check that we've got the right client ID and the right configuration. And what the, it's also going to generate the client, as we saw earlier, we were generating this this client, so we use that um, client queries post. Uh, this client is just a a file that gets generated, and, um, and when I ran TNCMS build, it got generated with the right information. This is not something that's checked into source control, so it's done in CI. It's done, you know, as you go. Um, and so right now, we've just generated it with the Tina Cloud URL, client ID, token, and you can see um, the main branch right here. If I run TNCMS dev again, you'll see quickly this is going to change back to localhost. Uh, and that's just something that, to keep in mind as you're checking things, debugging. Um, Tina CMS build is basically going to say, I want my build configuration, my client, to go ahead and talk to Tina Cloud. And it's going to do this, these checks and make sure you're all good to go. So, again, we can see this has been this has been created. The other thing that Tina CMS build is going to do is in, instead of running the single-page app server for the CMS, it's going to go ahead and compile it. Um, so we can check that out as well. 
Looks like that all went okay. So in this admin folder, um, we've got a fully compiled single page app. It uses Vite under the hood, so we've got all of our assets kind of bundled up here nicely for us to use. So from there, there's no other command to run. You can just run your site. So um, let's just do the next dev. This is something that trips people up a lot because there's no server running for our GraphQL API here. And that's exactly right. You're, you're, you're talking to an external server at this point, and you're basically testing what this will look like when you, when you actually go to deploy it. So if I go back in here and I'm looking at my site again, let me just go to the homepage here. Um, this content is no longer being served from Tina Cloud. It's now being served from, or no, no longer being served locally, it's being served from Tina Cloud. So one thing you'll see here, um, we've got assets being served from the Tina asset server, and I'll talk about that in a second, um, but let me make, make sure that's, that's fixed. Okay, so that's fixed. Uh, what what happened there is media, when it's get backed, there's no room for that media to live um, when you when you edit content, you know, on a hosted site. So if you were to imagine when you upload an image working locally, that goes to the file system, no problem there. Uh, when you upload an image onto say a Vercel host, where does that image go? Um, well, eventually it goes to GitHub and that image is sitting in your GitHub repo, but that image isn't on the server. So the way Tina works with images, especially, well, local images, get backed images, is it'll sort of sync that <clears throat> into a sort of free to use CDN um, for images. If you're really using a lot of images and it's kind of like a, a heavy part of your workflow, we would recommend probably using something, a third-party service like Cloudinary. Um, you can integrate with Tina and it works great and it scales really well and you don't have to do any of that sort of asset.tino stuff. It's all just always, you know, talking to Cloudinary. So, um, but with this, uh, we're all good to go. We're set up here. Looks like our site is working. If we look into the network here, we're not going to see it here. Let me go into the admin. Um, we can see that now we're actually talking to might be a bit small. Uh, we're talking to Tina.io. And so that's going to be just verification. Okay, we're good. We're talking to the right, you know, client or right uh, GraphQL server. But what's going to happen when we edit this content? Um, that's a little bit confusing sometimes when you're working locally is when I hit save here, what do I expect to happen? Well, a lot of time when you're working locally, you're going to expect to jump in here and you're going to expect the markdown file for the home you know, markdown file to be updated. But as I said, we connected to Tina Cloud, so we're not going to see that here. Instead, hit refresh here, and we'll see a commit from Tina Cloud. And I just wrote test into the markdown there. Um, and I can I can pull that. Um, let me see. And if I pull it down, I'll see that content updated um, here, or test, and we're good to go. So that's the workflow for just testing things, making sure they all work. Um, the next thing we can do is we can actually run our next build just to make sure things are actually working. And um, so we just talked to Tina Cloud. Um, we did the next build, or we did the Tina CMS build. Now we can just do the next build. And um, so this is going to build against Tina Cloud. With the, as the source of data. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go. Again, we know that this con this source content from Tina Cloud because um, we can look at our config or our um, our generated client here, and we can see that. Another thing we can do is if you're if you're testing and you're debugging and things aren't quite working, you can actually run Tina CMS dev and run the next build as, as a command. So you could do npx Tina CMS dev, and then the subcommand here could be next build. And that's a nice way to check sort of like, okay, well, I've got 
my local server is running and working properly and I've got next building properly against that. And then you could run the opposite um, and do sort of um, DNS CMS build and next and next build. Um, and so that's just like the way that you can kind of check that everything's working and, and got everything's wired up properly. Um, one more thing that I did here was that I was probably not following the best practices here, and I hard-coded this information. Um, Tina works with a .env, .env file, just like anything else, um, and you can use that. So I'm going to set up um, Tina client ID. If I go into my config here. And Tina token. Okay. And we could do some better checks for this, but um, for the sake of brevity. And the build process uh, is going to check these for you. So if you did, if you failed to provide this, it'll it'll throw an error. Um, but just to check one more time, okay, looks like that's all working properly. Um, Actually, sorry, just forgot to do one thing. Uh, so branch here is going to need to move with you um, if you create a different branch. And so we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, for now, I'm going to go, I think, Vercel system environment variable. So in Vercel, the branch is, is accessible with, with the um, system information branch, is it? Vercel branch URL, that's not what I want. Um, Okay, Vercel get commit ref. And I'm going to set that to main. And that's something working locally I can do. Um, and I can check things and, and test them out. But uh, when I'm deploying this, it's going to use the, the branch. So uh, I'll show how that works in a second. Okay, so we've got things set up working locally, working with Tina Cloud, we're good to go there. The next thing we can do is actually deploy this site. Um, and so we'll connect it for cell. And let's add a new one. Okay, so we're importing our repository here. For cell picks it up, knows, knows the right info, but environment variables here, that's gonna need to be um, provided again the Vercel commit ref git commit ref is already there um, copy and paste I love that feature from from Vercel it's awesome um, so we got our we got our environment variables there now should be basically the same process we we ran um, okay and one thing to note about that is the the build command was not just next build it was tncms build and and next build so that's going to do the thing that I ran when I was working locally here. Um, it's going to build the client, and like I said, the client is not connected to source control, so it's going to build it on on the CI there, and that's going to have this information because the environment variables. It's going to wire all that up, run the build, and then when that's good to go, it's going to build the site. Okay, it looks like that completed. So you can check in the logs here with with Marcel. Um, Tina finished the build, and then uh, the next thing that ran was the next build. Um, and we can visit that. And everything looks good here. Looks like the site's actually working. We still have our test value that we changed. Uh, one thing you might notice here is this URL. Uh, we, we're not going to be able to log in under that URL because we haven't updated it here. Uh, so we can add more URLs. Um, I'm not sure if that needs a trailing slash or not. And that's going to ask us to log in. And since we're logged into Tina Cloud, um, we're good. So we're ready to go here. And we change some content. And that's going to go straight over to GitHub. And so if we look at our site, uh, we should see commit from GitHub. 
and that's that's all it works. So another thing to talk about quickly here is we've got our main site running and it's editable. Uh, another thing that you get though with using get that content is branches and you get them pretty much for free. So um, let's say we're building a feature um, and we want to work on it, you know, in isolation. We can just do that automatically because we're leaning into Git and Vercel just kind of picks that stuff up. Um, let's make a quick change here. Um, let's say the label here has got an exclamation point. So we go into GitHub, create a branch. That branch is going to be um, spun up as a separate, completely separate sort of database in Tina Cloud. So if we look over here and we look at our configuration, we can see branch status for feature one is also complete. Um, and it's going to be a similar story to deployments here. Uh, we probably have another deployment working right now, or I guess it's done already. So feature one has been been deployed. Um, we can take a look at that, and that's going to be something we can just sort of jump in and, and edit um, kind of out of the box. And we'll get our credential, or we'll get our URL fixed up. And as long as we've got the site URL, we can also do cloud patterns here, but I'm just going to add this one manually. Um, so then for this branch, we can go ahead and, and log into that. And so any edits on feature one are going to stay on feature one. Um, let's add a bunch of exclamation points here. That's not going to get in the way at all of, of the other branch. Um, you can see here we're on the other the other URL. There's no no collision here. Um, Tina Cloud will be releasing some editorial workflow features in the future that are going to allow you to sort of bounce back and forth uh, very easily and create new branches from within this UI. But even without that, you can do uh, quite a lot. Um, so yeah, that's, that's Tina uh, from sort of A to Z. Um, thanks for watching.